I was sitting in your courtroom a while ago, and I honestly don't remember the case, but it was an initial request for a DVRO. And it was brought to you from downstairs, and the gentleman was arguing vigorously that you should not issue the temporary order. And I heard you say that the threshold on the initial filing is so low that you're just going to issue the order, and you're going to see everyone in three weeks. What would be the circumstances where the initial order is not granted, the initial showing is not made? Okay, well, first of all, I deny having said that. Okay. Um, <laughs> But, but here's what I do think. Um, and fortunately, we have experts like Doreen Boxer and Scott Gordon in the room on this point. I believe the legal standard for the issuance of a temporary restraining order for domestic violence is whether there is reasonable proof of one or more acts of domestic abuse as alleged or as defined in the family code. Reasonable proof if it is further defined by case law, I cannot cite that case law to you. I do think it is a relatively low burden of proof, but more to the point, the allegations are not evaluated for really for credibility and plausibility, in my opinion. You're looking at the four corners of a document. It's, it's almost as in civil practice, it's a demurrer. Are the words there sufficient that if, if eventually proven, should result in a permanent restraining order? My answer, again, is reasonable proof. Your question is, under what are the circumstances where a TRO would not be granted? Um, That's such an easy question. I'm going to, I'm going to let Scott Gordon answer that question. <laughs> what do you say, Judge Gordon? It's right. Uh, I can think of a couple of things. One, one circumstance that comes up where you've had a DVPA denied at hearing a week of very contemporaneously in the same facts play, no new act, the same facts play, where the conduct. One of the interesting things is the conduct doesn't qualify by relationship. It is one where the conduct as, and this is that judgment call, where the conduct as articulated to me is purely really a custody issue and not the DV. And then, look, we're still gonna do the hearing, but go for it. So look, those are some of the big ones that I would say off, off the top. And then you have others that just on its face isn't is it 6320 coming? Do any other judicial officers have a comment? Yes, sir. We see in Chatsworth, certainly, a lot of landlord-tenant disputes uh, fashioned as restraining orders. So she took my cheese in the refrigerator. Um, I'm, I've been renting her a room. She won't let me in. Uh, but nothing of the 6320 conduct or anything else that could be uh, the subject of, of an injunction. The other answer I have is sometimes the allegations are so conclusory without it, that there's simply no factual material to evaluate. It's just a bald conclusion. And um, I may deny it on that ground. One of the things that we have to decide in bringing a DVRO is whether to give notice and, you know, as lawyers, we are not trained. We know what the legal standard is. We know what the form says, right? As lawyers, we're not trained to assess safety, per se. If anything, we're better trained to assess a risk of abduction. But what impact does it have on you as a judicial officer whether or not notice was given in seeking the initial request? Very little Okay, is my answer. Yes. If... You know, I, I look at the declaration as to why notice was not given. Often it's quite conclusory. Well, um, the, for, the way the form is phrased is quite conclusory. Quite conclusory. That I, I fear that if I gave notice, you know, I fear that I would be subjected to violence. 
Uh, I take that at face value, by and large. I at least am, the answer to your question, I at least am not particularly affected one way or the other in domestic violence restraining order matters by the lack of notice. I do know, well, that I've answered the question, but I, again, would like comment from others. Judge Gordon has something. I completely agree with Judge Drift, but I want to ask one, and one thing for me. Depends on the relief you're asking for. If you're asking for a residential kickout, it means a lot more to me. You know, if, can if you, it's a, can if you it's expand? A, sure. If it's a dating relationship or the, the father or mother of a child and they don't live in the same residence and there's going to be a stay away for the 28 days, okay. If it means that you're going to walk back and exclude someone from the residence when we get done, I have more of a challenge because of the from just the peer due process concerns. Has that other individual that's going to get a pretty big uh, sanction against him or her had the opportunity to be heard? So in those kind, I'm going to be looking with a little more a little more polished than I might where it's people not living together and the result is you stay away for 21 days and don't harass like. So, so the relief faster is a big deal to me. And I guess, uh, oh, let's, let's get the comment from Judge Duran. Uh, also, if the other side is represented is also a, kind of a flag for me, uh, whether or not notice should have been given, uh, especially if this is already you know, two years into the dissolution action and all of a sudden we're having a hearing in about six weeks and there's a DV filed and no notice was given. I'm going to be more uh, likely to say you should give notice. We'll see you on Tuesday. Okay. And then a related, somewhat related question is, let's say someone comes in and obtains a TRO Without notice, what happens in my practice more frequently recently actually is that I then get an ex party notice three days later saying I'm going to go in and ask to vacate this TRO. And what's your, what's your reaction when you get that kind of an application on the TRO that you just issued three days ago? <clears throat> I don't welcome it, but I'm not hostile to it because of the kinds of things that Judge Gordon was just alluding to. There may be more to the story and maybe some form of interim, interim modified TRO really is more consistent with safety and justice. And, you know, the three days you're talking about, the hearing's still 18 days away. That's a lot of time out of somebody's life. Right. So am I delighted to have yet another tier, um, ex parte? No. But I understand well why somebody might bring it. 